friends, welcome back to another Food Course Storytime Friday with Miss Rachel. Today, we will be reading Shirley Chisholm is a Verb in honor of Women's History Month. Let's get ready to read. Shirley Chisholm is a Verb, written by Veronica Chambers and illustrated by Rochelle Baker. Some words, when they connect with the right people, become almost like potions or spells. These words become magical. That's the way it was with Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm and verbs. She understood, almost intuitively, how and why verbs are not just words about being, but doing. Verbs are words that move the world forward. Shirley's family understood all about moving. Her mother was from Barbados, an island in the Caribbean. Her father was from Guyana, a country in South America. They moved to New York City, where Shirley was born. When Shirley was three, her mother sent her and her sisters to Barbados so that their parents could work more hours. Her mother cleaned houses and office buildings. Her father worked in a factory. They worked all day and all night because they dreamed of buying a home for their family in the United States. In Barbados, Surrounded by her grandmother, aunts, and uncles, little Shirley worked hard too. Her classroom was noisy, and the three teachers that shared the room needed to project to be heard above all of the passionate students. But her teachers taught Shirley how to speak up, and they helped her understand the power of words. Later, she would say, if I speak and read and write easily, that early education is the cause. When she was nine, Shirley and her sisters moved back from Barbados to Brooklyn. Everything in Brooklyn was different, and Shirley missed the warm island weather. But Shirley loved indoor activities, like going to the movies and reading. Shirley was a voracious reader, much like her father. Shirley was also a dedicated student, and at her high school in Brooklyn, she was vice president of the Junior Arista Honor Society and graduated with a Medal of Excellence in French, she earned scholarships to both Vassar and Oberlin colleges, but her parents could not afford the room and board. Shirley decided to go to Brooklyn College instead and live at home in the brownstone her parents were ultimately able to buy through their hard work. In college, Shirley decided to pursue a career in education. She became a nursery school teacher and then earned her master's degree. Completing her education was hard work but it paid off. She directed daycare centers and became a consultant to the City on Early Education. She helped implement and organize a program called Head Start, which helps three and four-year-olds get ready for kindergarten. But Shirley wanted to help even more people. She believed that service to others is the rent you pay for your room on earth, which is another way to say that she wanted to use her verbs and improve the lives of as many people as she could just like her parents and her teachers had improved her own. She decided to go into politics. She ran for and won a seat on the New York State Assembly. The Assembly makes decisions for people all over the state of New York. She was one of the first people to argue that the New York State Literacy Test not be conducted only in English. New York was home to people from all over the world and Shirley thought it was important to honor the native languages of all the state's citizens. For her work in the New York State government, she was awarded a Salute to Women Doers Award. She was always a doer. Then, Shirley ran for the United States Congress, the part of the government that makes decisions for people all over the country. It was a race few thought she could win, but Shirley believed if your heart told you it was the right thing to do, you should always listen. She knew she could only fail if she didn't try. She campaigned, meaning that she encouraged people to vote for her. Her slogan was, unbought and unbossed. She wanted the people to know that she would never choose money or power over what was important to them. She campaigned in both English and Spanish because she wanted as many people as possible to understand her message. In her speeches, she called herself Fighting Shirley Chisholm 
because she wanted voters to know she wasn't afraid to stand up for what she believed in. The people of Brooklyn chose Shirley to represent them. She became the first black woman ever elected to Congress. Shirley traveled to Washington, D.C. There wasn't a single person who looked like her. It was a lonely time. Being the first and only often is. But Shirley Chisholm wouldn't give up. She thought of all the people back in Brooklyn who had voted for her. Shirley felt forever linked to them. Shirley's first assignment in Congress was the House of Agriculture Committee, a group of people who oversee the farmlands of America. Shirley was disappointed. She came from a big city. How would working with farms help the people in Brooklyn who voted for her? She shared this question with her friend. He encouraged her to use her position on the committee to help feed the hungry all over, including her beloved Brooklyn. Shirley helped to initiate a program called WIC, which assists women, infants, and children in need of food. Shirley also helped create the National School Lunch Program, but she didn't decide the menus. So if you don't like your lunch, please don't blame her. Because of her hard work, she eventually earned her dream job helping students and workers through the Education and Labor Committee. Shirley said, you don't make progress by standing on the sidelines, whimpering and complaining. She said, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. And Shirley wasn't just concerned about getting a seat at the table for herself. She never wanted to be the one and the only. She helped create the Congressional Black Caucus so more African Americans could be elected to serve in Washington, D.C. She wanted Congress to look like the America that had elected her. Not everyone in Washington applauded Shirley's wins. She was always more interested in serving people than in making laws that helped big businesses. The men on Capitol Hill who cared more about power and money said, Go home, Shirley Chisholm. She replied, I'm fighting Shirley Chisholm. You can't wish me away. You just can't. She remembered her impassioned teachers and her hardworking parents, and it gave her the spirit and the spunk to challenge the age-old traditions. She said, I'm not afraid of anything or anybody. Shirley was so unafraid that in 1972, after four years in Congress, she decided to run for president. Before a large crowd of people, she announced, I stand before you today as a candidate for the presidency of the United States of America. She was the first black person and the first woman to make a serious bid for the presidency. She said, I am not the candidate for black America, although I am black and proud. I am not the candidate of the woman's movement of this country, although I am a woman and I am equally proud of that. I am the candidate of the people of America. Shirley crisscrossed the nation, giving speeches, debating candidates on television, and registering voters. She needed to convince the Democratic Party that she would be the best candidate for president. People had called Shirley Chisholm many things before, but now they said she was black, beautiful, brave, brainy, bright, believable. Some of the other candidates were angry that Shirley was taking votes away from them, but Shirley knew how to hold her ground. She said, excuse me, I have a right to be here. Pay attention, I've got something to say. Listen, I've got a job to do, and I intend to do it. When people tried to silence her, Shirley spoke louder. When the media ignored her, Shirley protested vigorously. When other politicians tried to bully her, Shirley stood stronger. When her opponents said hurtful things, Shirley smiled wider. Then Shirley heard that the Democrats had decided that she would not be their presidential candidate. Shirley was disappointed but not discouraged. Shirley realized that just because she didn't win, it didn't mean that she lost. During her presidential bid, she had gained more delegates than many in the party expected. 
with each delegate that voted for her. She put a crack in the ceiling that separated women and men of color from the highest seat in the nation, the presidency. Some races are relays. We only need to run as far and as fast as we can. Shirley's verbs, her words, and her actions planted the seeds of possibility for others. Twelve years later, Geraldine Ferraro would crack the ceiling further when she gained the Democratic nomination for vice president. Twenty-five years after that, President Barack Obama would ascend all the way to the White House. Seven years later, Hillary Rodham Clinton would put 18 million more cracks in that ceiling when the Democrats nominated her for president. And then, in 2018, a record-breaking 131 women were elected to Congress. It is a number that would have made Shirley Bean. Part of the congressional class of 2018 was a young woman named Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Like Shirley, she was also known as the Congresswoman from New York. Like Shirley, Alexandria did things her way, and she prioritized the people who had elected her and put their concerns first. Shirley Chisholm inspired her. On her first day in Congress, Alexandria said, From suffragettes to Shirley Chisholm, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for the mothers of the movement. She informed the people in Washington that, in the spirit of Shirley, she was fighting Alexandria and they couldn't just wish her away. They couldn't. Shirley Chisholm once said, The next time a woman of whatever color or a dark-skinned person of whatever sex aspires to be president, the way should be a little smoother because I helped pave it. It was always her intention to throw the doors of government wide open, and she did. When Shirley retired from Congress, after serving seven consecutive terms in office, she said she wanted to be known for her courage to stand up for herself and the people who had elected her. She said, I'd like them to say that Shirley Chisholm had guts. In 2015, President Barack Obama awarded Chisholm the Medal of Freedom. Shirley's great-nephew accepted the award on her behalf. Speaking of her service to the nation and how tireless she was in her quest, President Obama said, There are people in our country's history who don't look left or right, they look straight ahead. Shirley Chisholm was one of those people. Shirley Chisholm accomplished so much because she chose her verbs carefully. Learn, negotiate, listen, stand, campaign, invite, debate, inspire, speak, represent. It's your turn now. What verbs will you choose? I want history to remember me not as the first black woman to have made a bid for the presidency of the United States, but as a black woman who lived in the 20th century and who dared to be herself. I want to be remembered as a catalyst for change in America. The end. Thanks for joining me for this week's Food Core Storytime Friday. Hope to see you all again soon.